Happy birthday to you. I keep doing just what you're doing. You're all right. Happy 100. Happy birthday, Mr. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Ruby. Hope to see you have another 100 years. Find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Welcome to the celebration of our queen, Ruby Gilchrist. Give it up, y'all. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. That's all right. The, the family invites you all to enjoy the food, music, and fellowship as we party with our very own Centurion. All right, uh, Miss Ruby, we are going to have a good time today. We hope that you just enjoy all these people, all this love that's in the room, and it's all about you. <laughs> Look at it. And so we're going to bring up probably one of your favorite singers. You probably know this singer probably when she was born. I know I've known her since she was about 16. And she's been blessing our hearts all along. So please, come on up here, Miss Jennifer Bell. today to uh, render this song for you. Oh, bless your heart and all your parts. She didn't burn up yet, not one note. She said, I love it. I just love you. I love your lemon meringue pies. And I hope you pop one in the car for me. I will always love you. All right? Okay, so here we go. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over all of my good days outweigh the bad days and I I won't complain all right, all right, all right. sometimes my clouds hang low I can hardly see the road. And I ask this question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Though my weary eyes can't see. And I say, Turn my midnights 
in today. And I say, thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. Happy birthday. I love you. Gracious God, our Father, we come, God, to give your name to praise, God. We give your name the glory for this new centurion, Ruby Gilchrist, God, for your seeing her through and guiding her through 100 years, God. That's 36,524 days. Mm. I can't imagine, God, how many times that you have blessed her in, those, in that time. How many times you made a way, God, out of no way. And we're so gracious to you, God. We thank you for your faithfulness, for her service, God. And we thank you, God, for blessing her. Now, God, we pray that you might bless this food for the nourishment of our bodies. Bless the, all of those who prepare the food and those who shall serve. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Life is good, really good. And every moment, no, I can't forget. I gotta say, I won't change. You're the reason that I am like this. In a day go by, yeah. I don't try what? to thank the Lord up above. And if you wonder why, why? I'm loving life, uh. come close and I tell you what's up. Listen. Ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. living every moment, no regrets. No. Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh, oh. yes, I'm blessed. Bless. Yes, I'm blessed. You know, yes, blessed. Ask me how I'm doing. I'm blessed, yes, blessed. Living every moment, no regrets. Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh, yes, I'm blessed, yes, I'm blessed, yes, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, today we gather to celebrate a truly remarkable woman the one and only, the notorious Miss Ruby Gilchrist, as May Caldwell finally, finally describes her. Yes, she's reached the incredible milestone of a century, and we're here to pay tribute to her extraordinary journey. Now, it's been said that Miss Ruby is not just a centenarian, she's a child of God. As Mr. Bush so wisely put it, she's a Christian woman through and through. You know, you're someone special when folks start invoking your my, almighty your name. But Miss Ruby is more than just a religious icon. She's a giver. She's given her heart to uplift God's kingdom, her business skills to the trustee board, and she played a significant role in raising funds to help First Baptist Church. And let's not forget lemon meringue pies. Yeah, yeah. That's the gift of the century. Speaking of those pies, they're so divine that even the trustees couldn't resist. They were so delicious that Melvin Huntley, one of our beloved trustees, even resorted to licking the spatula. Oh, the drama that ensued. You'd think it was the last utensil on earth, but the kitchen was quite a height from the trustee room, and someone had to wash the spatula so the others could delight themselves too. Another trustee who wishes to remain anonymous actually witnessed artist Daniels sneakily taking one of the pies for a secret indulgence at home. <laughs> and this woman would bring several pies to our watch night gatherings. I recall the time when my husband couldn't resist and spooned out a slice of pie at one of Cindy Smith's trustee gatherings. Oh boy, did this movie have a fit. Lesson learned never mess with pie protocol. <laughs> she told him, you don't spoon it, you slice it. These are true testaments to Miss Ruby's baking. Now, Miss Ruby wasn't just a pie making wizard. She was also a trailblazer. She was one of the first women trustees, and I just found out today from Mr. Bush that her husband was a trustee first. She was one of the first women trustees, and she welcomed us ladies, Cindy, Jeannie, Carol Ann, and me with open arms, inspiring us to have a voice and become leaders while encouraging Miss May to become vice, the first female vice chair, which may comply. As Janelle will tell you, 
Her warmth and support were legendary. Now let's take a stroll down memory lane. In the trustee room on Sunday mornings, there was Howard Virgil, Roy Mullins, Artis Daniels, Herb Middleton, George Brunson, Frank Lomax, just to name a few. The room was filled with male dominance, conversations of church business, uncontrolled chatter, and debates. Everyone trying to make their opinion the most pronounced. But who kept order in that room? You guessed it. Our very own Miss Ruby, with quick wit and a silver tongue, she could silence the rowdiest debates, leaving the guys to discuss their opposing views once she left the room. They even had a nickname for her behind her back, of course. It was Fox. They would express, can't tell a fox anything, right? <laughs> Miss Beverly Miller said she got such a kick out of how Miss Ruby handled those guys in the boardroom. She could shut down the most heated debate with the grace of a seasoned diplomat. Miss Ruby wasn't one to mix words either. She once told Bill Robinson that he shouldn't operate the Bill County machine because he kept jamming it up. She said he wasn't an expert and should consider another job in the count room. <laughs> Brutally honest, but that's Miss Ruby for you. And by the way, Bill honestly agreed with her. <laughs> what a fashionista. Carolyn Edwards remembers Miss Ruby as an elegant lady. Those designer suits, designer shoes, matching bags, and expensive jewelry. She was top shelf, and the male trustees couldn't help but admire her impeccable style. And let's not forget her tech savvy side. At 99 years old, she slid into Gerard's DMs with a Facebook birthday wish. Who knew she was not only a pot making legend, but also a social media, social media maker. Many of our current board members may not have served beside of you, but you are no stranger to them. They honor your contribution to our board. So at this time, I'm asking all the trustees to stand for our presentation. So here's to Ms. Ruby Joker, the centenarian with style, wit, and a heart of gold. May your next century be just as fabulous, filled with laughter, joy, and a great, most unforgettable lemon meringue pies. Happy 100th birthday. You are a legend in every sense of the word, and for that, we will be establishing two book awards in an amount of $1,000, each dedicated to your legacy. These awards will be presented to the FBC Scholarship Ministry for distribution in the upcoming year. The book awards will only serve as a meaningful tribute to you, but also honor your commitment to education and the development of young minds within our church community. May God continue to bless and keep you. Uh, I came closer, a blood relative, but there's one closer than me that is here. Your first cousin's daughter, by the name of June Thompson of New York. She's right there. Uh, I saw start out that way. I didn't know Ruby, uh, when we started having family reunions, uh, which is a good thing I think most people started to do. Uh, her uncle, William Mobley, uh, informed me of a lot of people and, and gave me your address as well. Me back a little bit. Uh, to our master of ceremony, <laughs> Mr. Michael Kennex, and, and to our chairperson, uh, Mr. O'Connor, and then our direct assistant this afternoon, uh, of Darwin, and we've been with her visit today. Um, now, back to what I was saying is that um, I didn't know Ruby, so in 1986, we went on a, a church fellowship to uh, Columbus, Ohio, and a first cousin, uh, uh, Brother Bob, Lester Mobley, and said, Well, let's get this family reunion going again. And I mentioned to him, I'd never been to a family reunion, but I'd be willing to help. So we organized, and by 1987, we had our first family reunion. And uh, when Ruby got her letters, from what I heard, she said that, uh, who are these people? <laughs> I don't know these people. <laughs> and, uh, and after that, um, 
She used some words that I was told now. I don't know what she said, because I don't have that. <laughs> but she, she used some some words, maybe the big N word too. <laughs> Who are these people? But in 1987, at that reunion, that was love on display. Uh, as when I went to Philadelphia to a reunion one time, we said we, love was so strong, we cut it with a knife. But at that family reunion, I was showing from the house to the, to the hotel, uh, other, whatever, and one of the cousins said, somebody here wants to see you. You better get that down here. And I said, who is that? So I hurried up and loaded up, went down, I did a holiday in Coliseum, and, and when I got in that hospitality room, boy, they were in an uproar. They had only met that night, that evening, for the first time, a lot of them. I know Ruby didn't know anybody there, right? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know Ruby from anybody else. Yeah. But they was laughing and talking and carrying on like they've been knowing each other a long, long time. So that was my first introduction to uh, to Ruby Gilchrist. And ever since then, we have been very close. And people talk about wisdom and all of that. Uh, Yes, she has a whole lot of it, and we talk quite often. And uh, sometimes I don't talk very much, but I do a lot of listening. <laughs> and, 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 and somebody says, she have the last word, she gonna come out on the Yes, she does. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's all well. <laughs> it's all well and good. But, but, uh, that's the way I got acquainted with, with, with uh, uh, Ruby. And uh, everybody in the family loves her like might be their sister or whatever. But um, I respect her and love her and always will. Uh, uh, a lot of our people probably didn't get here from wherever they live. But you came to my 80th birthday, 60 years ago, to my 80th birthday celebration. And I thank you for that. And a lot of those attendees is in this picture book that I'm going to give you today. When I looked through and talked to the uh, printer at Benedict College, I only found one picture of you in there. You should have had more than that. Oh, she was the first one to speak, I do believe. But, uh, anyway, on behalf of those that are still alive, a lot of them gone, uh, I'm going to present this book to you, this picture book. It's, it's something that you can remember of the people that uh, attended my 80th birthday celebration six years ago. And uh, I'm going to get to you. Okay, thank you. Three pages down, you see, okay, that totally makes me large. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my two minutes up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dr. Goodman. Yes. I was just beginning to say something. <laughs> Where the nervousness. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dorothy Hall. I'm so happy to see so many of you here this afternoon to acknowledge and celebrate God's special blessing to us, my little sis, Mrs. Ruby Gilchrist. Did I surprise you? Yes. About two years ago, Ruby decided that she would be my little sister and I would be the big sister. And so it is. What a friend I have in Ruby. 34 years ago, I met this God-fearing, classy, sassy, educated, and well-coughed woman, Mrs. Gilchrist. We met at the monthly Homeowners Association meeting of Douglas Estate South in New Brunswick, New Jersey, where I was president. From that meeting on, I knew that we would become friends and allies to support and ensure that our homeowners association would be successful for all homeowners. We would walk home together after the close of the meetings and felt comfortable enough with each other to share things about our joys, sorrows, and our families. I learned that Ruby and I both attended First Baptist Church of Lincoln Gardens 
Ruby's many years of exemplary devotion, leadership, and hard work in many positions of the church was amazing to me. Ruby and I worked together as members of First Baptist Church Naomi's Fellowship for several years. Ruby has the most beautiful penmanship and she was our Sunshine Club secretary while I was the treasurer and gopher. You know, somebody had to pick up our refreshments. I spoke with Ruby often to my family and they couldn't wait to meet her. She attended many of my family's invites and the special love and admiration we had for each other grew as we adopted her into our clan. Her sense of humor, happy and caring disposition endears her to all age groups. Ruby has a special, Ruby had a special relationship with my granddaughter, Quinn. They would text and call each other often. My family and I can never thank Ruby enough for her constant prayers and words of encouragement during Quinn's illness. It was during this difficult time that Ruby taught me the proper way to ask God to ask for God's favor and grace. She may never have given birth physically to a child, but many willingly claim her motherly love, affection, and guidance. I told you that she was sassy. And did I say stubborn? Once she made her mind up, to know Ruby is to love Ruby. I can tell you as one Virgo to another, we are proud, hardworking, determined, curious, and God-fearing. If you've never tasted Ruby's goodies, her delicious pound cake and apple cake, pies, you are missing a delectable delight. Her lemon meringue pie is a favorite of Minister Sori's. Her annual Christmas cookies are legendary, baked by the dozens and shipped to her extended family and friends across the country, as well as to us here in New Jersey. Ruby started gathering her ingredients months ahead. This is a practice she carried on for many years by herself. She was very particular about the size and shape of her cookies. When COVID-19 came around, Ruby was so humbled by the love, concern, and, so, and shopping so many people did for her, she would say, when I pray to God, I am so thankful for all of this, but what did I do in my life to deserve such kindness and for people to show me so much love? I reminded her of her faithfulness to God and his church. Plus, when she traveled up and down the East Coast to visit family and friends in her younger years. This was my time to tell my friend that the work she did earlier in life is now speaking for her. I thank God for blessing us to share this rare, special, exemplary 100th birthday with you, Ruby. You are my friend, a rare gem, a priceless jewel, and not many are blessed to achieve this special age. To know Ruby is to love Ruby. Happy blessed birthday, little sis. One hundred years, Ruby. My social security number has nine numbers. How many of yours? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just got a, memories from Ruby growing up. Ruby's mother and my grandmother were sisters. Therefore, my mother and Ruby are first cousins. We, my mother had four sisters, and Ruby fell right in line with them. They were all growing up at the same time and having life and enjoying it. And when my, my mother had, had the three of us, me, my brother, Ron, and Lee, Ruby came into our lives right at birth. And she's been with us ever since, and she's a rock in the family. Mm -hmm. She 
we was little on Saturday nights, Bid Whist was the thing. We were little kids, okay. but they played Bid Whist on Saturday nights. And I think they came there because when it was bedtime, me, Ron, and Lee, we went around the table and kissed everybody. <laughs> so every night, once we got old enough, we was right in there with them and bid with. Ruby took us through a lot of affairs where we were picnicking at Johnson's Park, Rawway, Janesburg, and we always played cards out there in the park. Had a good time, and as we grew, we played more and more. Ruby is just one of those people that, oh, uh, I'm glad she's there. She's lead the way for us, and we're following her steps, and we enjoy talking with her. Although we're separated, my brother's in California, my brother's in Florida. We stay on the phone and keep in touch with Ruby because she's always influenced us to do well whatever we do. We used to go to ball games. Uh, it, well, she followed us all through sports and stuff coming through school. Even when we had bus trips going to the Met Stadium. Matter of fact, she met her husband at a Met ball game <laughs> on the bus. And, and, and they became happily married. Jimmy, my boy. And uh, when I got married, I came to Ruby and I asked her, Ruby, would you have the honor to let us have our wedding at your house? And we did. And it was a humdinger. A happy, happy wedding. And my wife, Sylvia, and I would like to thank you again for that day, because you made our day so well. Mm. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And longevity runs in her family. Her mother was 99. Her aunt, Gladys, was 96. So there's Longevity. I hope she keep pulling me up that line. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Oh, you're the heart my contentment you're the hope for all i do jesus you're the center of my joy you are why i find pleasures in the simple things in life you're the in the meadows and the streams you're in the voices of our children my family and my home you're the source and finish of my highest dreams Whoa, jesus you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. No, you're the heart of my contentment. You're the hope for all. You are the center of my joy, Jesus. Oh, you are the center, the center of my joy. And when I'm down and out, oh, and I'm feeling sad, Lord, you are the lifter, you are the lifter of my head, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of 
God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me and never to leave me. And he never, ever comes short of his word. If you fast and pray, stay in the narrow way and keep your life clean every day. You will go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I never turn back because God is more. God is. Sit, God is. I'm Ruby knows that God God is my own and own. Amen, amen. We just want to thank God for being Aunt Ruby's joy all of these years. And you can only make it this far in life if you embrace the fact that he will be your joy, that he will be your strength, and that he will be the one that does exceeding and abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the power that is already at work with you. So let's give Aunt Ruby a big round of applause as she takes the center stage. We're going to sing his happy birthday. I don't know what version. We, we're going to do the first version, I guess. We're going to do the regular version. Yeah, you're, look at this. We're going to do it in our works. This is the key right here. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, y'all got that? Right Come on, here. choir. I'm Ready? Go off notes. Ready? Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aunt Ruby. Happy birthday to you. All right, this is the one everybody knows. Ain't a birthday party without Stevie Wonder sound, right? You can come up here and take your pictures. What a glorious occasion. No. Point to the birthday person. Point to the birthday person. Point to the birthday person. 
Ready to bust a move, y'all. She get ready. It's coming. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you celebrate 100 years. We will now have some final remarks. Uh, please welcome. Miss Tony Adams. Uh, Miss Ruby, we have some um, acknowledgments of, for, from some very important people. Um, this first one is from the mayor of East Brunswick. Okay, it's a proclamation. It says, happy birthday, Ruby Gilchrist. Whereas on September 11, 1923, Ruby Gilchrist was born in Salem Crossroads, South Carolina. Around the age of five, her family moved to New Brunswick, New Jersey. Ruby became a resident of East Brunswick in 2003. And whereas Ruby was employed by Radio Corporation of America in Somerville, New Jersey as a research technician, from 1957 to 1984. And while working at RCA, she traveled five nights per week to the Poro School of Beauty Culture and became a licensed beautician. And whereas Ruby has been a faithful member of First Baptist Church of Lincoln Garden, Somerset, New Jersey since 1967, she served as a church trustee board member for over 25 years and the church radio announcer for over 20 years. Her most cherished memories are working with the youth in the church and the community. And whereas Ruth B. enjoyed traveling across country by train and then in a helping hand wherever she saw a need, she also enjoys sharing her baked goods with family and friends. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Brad J. Cohen, mayor of the township of East Brunswick, Along with the Township Council, wish Ruby all the best on this special day and may her 100th birthday be filled joy with joy and spent with the people who mean the most to her. Mayor Brad J. Cohen. All right. This one is from Bunny Watson Coleman, member of Congress. Dear Ruby Gilpress, as your representative of New Jersey's 12th Congressional District, I am honored to wish you a very happy birthday filled with laughter and love. I would like to express my sincere appreciation and admiration to you on your 100th birthday. The birthday, this birthday is a celebration of your life and it is an opportunity for all of us to recognize your tremendously positive impact on your loved ones and those around you. I hope you take pride in your continued dedication to the First Baptist Church of Lincoln Gardens as a trustee for 40 years. Your involvement in our community and lifetime of experience makes you a most treasured individual. During this momentous occasion, I hope you find yourself surrounded by family and friends to reflect upon the years of love and achievements. I pray for your continued health and happiness in the years to come. Please accept my heartfelt congratulations and best wishes for an enjoyable celebration of your centennial year. Have a wonderful and happy birthday. God bless. Sincerely, Bunny Watson Coleman. The last one is from our governor. Dear Ruby, happy 100th birthday. As governor, I am pleased to join with your family and friends in wishing you the very best on this special day. As a centenarian, you have experienced and witnessed so much throughout your many changes in the world around us. Birthdays are an occasion to look back upon all the joys and blessings that have made our lives special. Your years of unique life experiences have left you with much to be proud. Through life's trials and challenges, you have always persevered and maintained your integrity. It is because of your unbreakable spirit that you have become such a strong pillar 
for both your family and your community. You have enriched every life you have touched. And on this day, all those whom you have touched throughout your life come together to celebrate you for your commitment and dedication. And I thank you for your service. Congratulations and best wishes for good health and happiness in the future. My very best, Philip D. Murphy, Governor. We will now have remarks from Sylvia O'Connor. A few months ago, I got a phone call from Sharon. And she said, you know, a couple of people have been asking, um, Ruby's going to turn 100 years old, you know, is there anything that's going to be going on? And we were like, okay, let's make it happen. You know, make it happen and we'll have it going on. And right after that, Sharon came aboard and the three of us worked together. And the first thing that I want to say is don't ever believe that women can't work together without controversy. We had a good time. We had many Zoom meetings. We worked on this, that, and the other. We took each other's ideas. Um, there was no you know, animosity, no nothing. Nothing but sheer pleasure. And so I would like to thank both of you for the three of us being able to work together and to get this um, all done. In the beginning, um, Ruby said, I don't want to know nothing. Y'all just do what you do and, you know, so forth and so on. Then after a little while, she was like, well, I don't know nothing that's going on, you know? And I'm like, well, yes. But I said, but you told us to do what we do and you didn't want to do, you, you didn't want to know anything. And so that's basically what we did. We let her in on a few things. Um, but thank you, Ruby, for trusting us to take, you know, do the groundwork and make this a um, really, really fun day. I want to thank Chloe and Anisha. I keep trying to call you Anika, even though I know that's not your name, but. They joined um, some of the Zoom meetings and they just was like, okay, you need to do this, 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 boom. You need to do that, that, this, and that. I'm like, okay, all right. And they just did their thing, took care of the stuff that we didn't know too much about and everything turned out really, really great. Um, thank you, Valerie and the Bush family. They provided the beautiful cake that you saw, and anybody else who helped organize or get in touch with people or whatever, I'd like to thank you. And this turned out to be a really, really great occasion. Thank you so much. Now we're ready to hear from our guest of honor. Please, the microphone is yours. You wanna stand up? If you don't have two minutes, take all the time you need. In two minutes. <laughs> In two minutes. <laughs> God bless you, Michael. To all of you that have come today, that I've lived through many eras in my life. But tonight, I'm over well. It takes a lot to overwhelm me. <laughs> but I'm so grateful to all of you that have pressed your way through this weather. Uh, many could have been here other than the fact that flights were canceled and the weather just played in. And I was a little bit down thinking, oh, people are not going to come out and all this rain and wind and what have you. But God is good. Amen. And I, I rebuke myself because I know better. Yeah. What he intends to happen, it's going to happen. Amen. 
and so forth. Thank you so much. I'm enjoying it. And I often think about something that my father used to say. My father used to say that there was a man that uh, lived with his family. And he passed away. And the people, he, he wasn't very good to his family. And when he passed away, people were talking and giving such great accolades about what a great man he was and all the good things he had done. And his wife said to her son, go up there and see if that's your father. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm sitting here listening to all of these accolades tonight. And I'm saying, is that me? <laughs> But I thank you and I appreciate it. Uh, God has been good to me. Amen. Like I said, I was born uh, about five years at the end of the first pandemic. And of course, as I grew older, I heard the older people talking about all of the tragedies and the things that happened during the pandemic. Of course, at that time, there weren't too many doctors. You didn't hear of hospitals and people in distances apart. But they would go and visit to try to take care of the people who were involved in the pandemic. And often they would go and find people dead in the house. And I said to myself, well, that must have been something else. And, but I, I read from that their caring about the people that they lived around and how they were trying to support them. Then I moved on to the Depression. And of course, in the Depression, I suffered just like many of you did. Many of us didn't know where we were going to get food or how we were going to get food. I can remember my mother taking my clothes off me at night, washing them and hanging them over a coal stove so that I could have clean clothes. I can remember my so-called brother, he was my stepfather's nephew, I can remember him taking his homemade wagon, going to food uh, distribution center and getting crates full of canned goods. And most of the canned goods didn't have any labels. So our entertainment was to put those cans up on the table and <laughs> tried to tell say what was in them. <laughs> Whatever it was, we were ha happy to have it be enjoyed. Then God moved us on and he moved us up a little bit more. And I proceeded to get jobs as I got out of school. Worked. I worked at interest factories. I worked in chemical factory. I worked at RCA for 27 years, and I'm grateful tonight to have my latest boss from RCA here. Norm, stand up, let them see. Me. I spent many a day <laughs> with that gentleman. I'm also happy to have here tonight my godchildren. One was supposed to come in. His uh, aunt's birthday was last night, and he probably wouldn't have been able to get here anyhow because all flights from Georgia were canceled. But Val and Al, stand up. Bishop, Bishop Jones and Stella, come on. And of course, I have opted all of the halls over there. 
I've got more children than any of you in this room. <laughs> Little ones, big ones, I'm on Ruby to everybody. And I love you. I love you. God has been good to me. My immediate family uh, all passed away. My mother passed away Christmas Day of 1999. And I used to agonize because I didn't have children, I didn't have sisters or brothers. What is going to happen to me as I get older? Who's gonna, if I need help, who's gonna help me? And there again, I should have been ashamed of myself because God never leaves us. He takes care of us, but sometimes your human element sets in mm -hmm. and you forget about what God's gonna do. You just think about what's happening right now. But let me tell you the, the scripture in Ecclesiastes, I believe it says, cast your bread upon the water. Yeah. You'll find it again in a few days. Everywhere I have seen a need or thought there was a need, I have helped, I have given, I have shared. And I don't regret not one gift that I gave, not one anything that I did. Because in my house right now, there's not a thing that I need, that I want, that's not there. People call me and offer help and want to do this and want to do that. And, and sometimes they want to do things I feel like I still can do it myself. But they want to help. So sometimes I sometimes I tell them activity is life. You have to keep doing something. Or you you'll just rock yourself on out here. So let me do as much as I can as long as I can. And God God takes care of me. He takes good care of me. And I'm grateful and again. I'm thankful to all of you. I'm grateful to all you guys who are aggravated in the trustee room. <laughs> but they adhere, they listen. And when I left the room, they were happy. <laughs> Take them to the left that I left, but they want to be talking about the boxes and who played the ball game and who did this and who did that. And we had a, 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 a monitor up there. We had to count the money, but we could see the service. We could hear the service, but they'd be talking about everything <laughs> but the service. I just quiet them down. <laughs> and I'm so grateful. I thank you for accepting it. <laughs> thank you. God bless you all. And I ask that you continue to pray for me that God will continue to bless me. I, I, I feel like I'm blessed among thousands. I can live independently by myself. Go to the grocery store, hop in my car, go to the grocery store, buy my grocery, come home and cook it. Nobody has to feed me. Amen. I'm blessed. For all of those who come to my aid, to my rescue, or feel that I need the help, thank you. God will bless you. And I say to you tonight, thank you so much for all of the accolades. It's going to help me live a few more years. <laughs> God bless you. I thank you. And I hope you have a safe trip. I told you she was our dream. Give it up for Miss Ruby Gilchrist.